Hey there again folks, welcome back to my let's play of Never 7, The End of Infinity. The last time we learned a bit about Yuka, um, about, the, uh, about the dude that she uh, liked back in, uh, back in middle school years, and uh, how the guy reminded her of Makoto, or how Makoto I suppose reminded her of that guy, so. Yeah, and then they found a bale. Like the one that was in a dream and the one that Koto had thrown out into the ocean. Trying to get it from this little girl. So, yeah. This route, I had decided that I wasn't just going to force the, the bell from her. I was going to try to persuade her. Here, little girl, let me give you uh, a pack of Starburst. And you give me that bell. Is that how he's going to persuade her? Because those kids can be stubborn, but then that would be creepy too. When I ran over to a girl, I bent over just like you go. Um, uh, will you listen carefully to what I have to say? The truth is, that bell is a very scary thing. There's a ghost sealed into it that comes out in the middle of the night. And then it drains the souls of all the humans in the area and gobbles on them. So, so give that bell back to me for safekeeping. I'm sorry, are you a weirdo? Huh? You're a weirdo too, aren't you, ma'am? <laughs> the girl looks back and forth between you and I restlessly. Her eyes are just overflowing with tears. She's completely frightened. You're wrong. It's not a, it, it, it. Papa! Suddenly my ears are shattered by the girl's loud, shrill scream. I went to this unexpected development. It's not that I didn't know how I should have coped with it. It's that I was just so frantic that I wasn't thinking clearly. While this has happened, the girl slips out from between you and I, and I, with faltering steps, runs towards the entrance of the park. A married couple looks at us with a with suspicious glance. Naturally, we can't chase them. Right now, that bell is still being held by that girl. What should I do? First, what should I think to do? I don't even know that, leaving me bewildered. Glance over towards Yuka. For some reason, Yuka's eyes are muddy and glazed. Her artificial smile twitches and her cheeks turn pale. Kihama. Yuka mutters this to herself. Moon Beach? Uh, uh, How can you say it's nothing? Your face is completely pale. Yuka looks downwards, avoiding eye contact. So Yuka, there's something I want to ask you. Mm? It's very important. Mm. Huh? I have to do it right now. But it's not that important. Is what she's saying. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Yuka. Leaving with those words, Yuka runs away. That was a strange sentence now that I think of it. Run on back ahead, Zami. So, so uh, I don't know. Ahead and back seem like words that shouldn't be in the same sentence. It makes sense. It's not an incorrectly written sentence. It just popped out of my brain like that. She shoots me a glance that shuts down any thoughts I had of chasing her. Yuka's hiding something. That's for certain. It is certain. But I have the feeling that asking her anything right now would be useless. All I can do at the moment is wait. Just a little bit until she's calm again. Yuka, calm. But nah, she's she's not that she's not that high strong. I close my eyes and let the sea breeze blow by me. I need to still the confusion in my mind. I can't hear the wind. The only sound that I can hear is that of my own excessively loud breathing. It feels like I've crawled under the bottom of the deep ocean. In this loneliness, my thoughts return to where I had left off before, about Yuka and the bell. Though Yuka spoke to that girl kindly, 
She was pressing her persistently about the bell. And even earlier than that, Yuka said this when she saw the bell I picked up. In other words, Yuka recognized it. That bell. Why? Why does Yuka know about that? Bell. But the truth is, in the deep in the deep darkness, it'll remain there until I can get the truth from Yuka's only lips. And there's one more, much more important problem that's coiling around my head. The fact that that bell has appeared before me once again. There's no mistake that it's the bell from my dream. If that's the case, it's, if that's the case, then is that dream? Well, there's no way that could be possible, right? I don't know. He is seeing, he is able to predict stuff like rice jars being empty and cars not being able to start. Uh, earthquakes. Not that much of a stretch. What the hell am I saying? Something like this is nothing more than a simple coincidence. Simple co coincidence. That old excuse again. Can all these strange incidents over the past few days be explained with those three simple words? I don't know. I have absolutely no clue what's... I have no clue what's what. I can't find one thing that I can declare I have confidence in. No matter how many times I surrender myself to the sea breeze, I can't solve the confusion in my mind. Rather, the chaos gets excessively and complexly, and complexly entangled in proportion to the time passing to the point where now I can't even find the origin of it all. I feel like I'm at the bottom of the sea. If I look in a random direction, can I crawl up? If this is the bottom of the ocean where no light reaches, and even the distinction between heaven and earth doesn't reach here. My head is throbbing with pain and my stomach is turning inside out. And what should I do? Either what's the first thing I should do? All I can do is untie the tangled threads until I can catch hold of that clue. The bell, I have to find that bell. I can worry about Yuka later. Anyway, for now, my first priority is finding the little girl who has the bell. The anxiety that comes from doing nothing is worse than any danger in my face, as they say. With my mind made up, I calmly opened my eyes. This was the first place I could think of, the Tsukiya Hotel. Judging from her appearance, that girl is definitely a tourist on a family vacation. If that's the case, then they must be staying at this hotel. I approached the hotel's automatic doors. Before I can reach them, they suddenly open up, and the one who comes outside is that girl. Wow, that's easy. Man, get this guy detect some detective shoes here. I'm not sure why I said that. That don't make any sense. I mean, obviously detectives wear shoes, but they're not detective shoes, I don't think. A magnifying glass is kind of outdated, though. Yeah, okay, get him a magnifying glass. About that bell. Yeah, this is a good frightener. This guy, possibly, well, from her point of view, it'll seem like he followed her. Even though he just guessed at where she was. And followed her. Yeah. Okay, so that's creepy. <laughs> so, good job on uh, not freaking her out here. Oh, you're... Oh. Oh, you're that. Listen, I want that bell back, no matter what. And I will punch you in the face. That's hard. I gave it away! Gave it away, what? Gave it away, gave, gave it away to who? Oh, did Yuka, oh. Hmm, maybe Yuka beat him to it. While he was uh, all transfixed on the, uh, on the uh, thinking part. Hey, look, look, isn't it cute? I completely can't remember the voices that I'm doing here, so this girl is going to sound like a little girl and possibly an old lady at different points. 
The girl ignores my question and slowly pulls something out of her pocket. Yeah. You could trade it with her. On top of her small palm is a keychain that I recognize. <coughs> Attached to the keychain is, uh, is the fat cat mascot character. It's Yuka's. There's no doubt about it, this is the keychain Yuka said she bought from the souvenir shop. We traded them! You traded with Yuka? Yuka? Is Yuka the name of this cat? That's not it. Did the girl who was with me at Viewpoint Park give this to you? Yeah, that's right. That lady traded it with me. I knew it. I see. Thanks for telling me. I pat the girl on the head and start running. However... Oh, that's right. I suddenly realized something. I turn around and tell her this. It seems that cat's name is Nininekopion. Kodo is the very concerned guy who worries about people calling something by the fake names or something. But that's a crucial thing to do. Isn't it cute? As I leave, I hear a voice coming from the hotel lobby. Hey, I told you not to go outside on your own, right? Here you can. So... The girl's name is Yui, or well, that might be a that might be shortened uh, a shortened nickname. I don't know. Right now, I'm turning face up on the bed, staring blankly at the ceiling. Of course, when I returned to the lodge, I immediately looked for Yuka. But Haruka told me that she went to Hot Springs, so I stopped there and decided to wait in my room on standby. As I look at the ceiling, I think of that bell. I think about it, but I can't think of any sort of answer. I realize I am both physically and mentally exhausted. Against my will, I am suddenly dragged into an intense drowsiness that's consuming me. No, I, I can't fall asleep now. I've got to ask Yuka about the bell. I've got to ask her. Oh my gosh, he's morphing into Shatner. This is an emergency situation. Despite my efforts, I lose consciousness in the blink of an eye. Okay. Loud noises. Suddenly I hear the sound of something bursting open. Surprised by the sound, I frantically jump off the bed to my feet. When I look towards the door, I see... Izumi-san? Yeah. I wasn't expecting her, yeah. Kurumi ga... Kurumi ga hinai no! Izumi-san gathers the four of us in the living room and tells us what had happened. After that, everyone went home.私はバーベキューの道具を倉庫にしまってシャワーを浴びたの。シャワーから出たのが9時半ぐらいで、それで2階に上がってみたら、くるみちゃんがいなかった。思いつくところは人通り探してみたんだけど、お店の中も月浜
ミイラ取りがミイラにってことにもなりかねないから。You know what would be very useful in these instances? Cell phones. You're saying, I see. でも。It's alright, leave it to us. We'll, we'll find her for sure. And it's possible she might have already returned. She might be there, cheerful and oblivious to what's happened. Nevertheless, the uneasiness doesn't fade from her expression. Her gaze nervously shifts from left. Say shifts? It sounded like I said shifts. <coughs> Shifts from left to right, looking all over her surroundings. It's clear that she hasn't calmed down. y u k a t a Buka. I was wondering. Yeah, they just stay here. You're, you're not even t e n n i s court. So, they got a b u t c h n e Check the graveyard. b u t c h n e So, they just took so sack. Kaisi. Mitz got that as soon as you're not eating. Moto. E. You guys hear a bird? I thought I heard a bird. Yuka, Haruka, and Izumi san split up at the T junction at the foot of the hill. In the corner of my mind, thoughts of Yuka and the bell still lurk. But now is it the time to be worrying about that, something like that? I think Harumi comes first. I stand in the center of the Princess Beach and call Harumi's name. Hey, Harumi! I shout out towards the darkness. However, I get no response. Only the sound of the waves breaking up at the, on the shore breaks up the silence. When I suddenly look down, I see the scattered remains of the barbecue. It looks so lonely that it's hard to believe that we were making a huge ruckus here just hours ago. Karumi, I let us sigh. I lightly kick away the fragments of charcoal lying at my feet and leave Princess, Pri leave Princess Beach. Just where is Karumi? Look left and right as I run down the shoreline. The row of cherry blossom trees shrouded in the darkness. I bet they'd look a lot better if it were daytime. The cherry blossom petals illuminated by the moonlight appear vaguely white as they float in the darkness. Karumi! Shout as I walk through the row of trees. There's no sign that, that anyone's here either. The jet black sea blurs the moonlight shining in on it. Lighthouse's light makes a dull metallic sound as it spins around. In the end, I couldn't find Krumi. <sighs> Can't talk tonight. Good. <clears throat> I casually lean on my elbows against the fence and look to the north from the south. And then the north, at the edge of the north, I can see Moon Beach. There's a small light lit in Luna Beach's open terrace. Now that I think about it, I've seen this lighthouse from Moon Beach before. I'm sure it was two nights ago. That time, Mizumi san told us that if two people confessed under this lighthouse, their love would bear fruit. Then she told us the story about the shrine afterwards. The shrine! That's right, she could be at the shrine. Two nights ago, Karumi invited everyone to go on a mystery tour. Even though Mizumi san got, then got angry, Karumi still had a kind of unsatisfied expression on her face. That was very, very obvious. I immediately start running towards the Shikinomori Shrine. I totally lied earlier. I, I remember that line. I, I remember the name of that totally. Totally did not forget the name of that uh, that place. I leave the row of trees and exit out onto the paved road. To my surprise, I see Yuka right there. Yuka, how's it going? Did you find her? Mm hmm, I'm not I see, you got it. Then I pick up my pace. I hear Yuka's voice from behind. I have a hunch as to where she is. I turn my head and shout this while running. Here. With my fingertip, I pointed out to Yuka, who followed me the whole way. Right, it's the Shikinomori Shrine. He's been saying, told us about. Yeah, probably. 
I say this and, and place my foot on the staircase's first step. But then, you could jerk my arm back. Huh? Yuga, could it be you're worried about the rumors you see me saying told us about? Then why? Man, the bad feelings are really strong in, with this one. I know I've heard those words before. You have. That's right, two days ago, just before Saki was, was swallowed by the wave, Yuka said the, those, these exact same words. At that time, I turned a deaf, the deaf ear to them. I get it. Before I know it, I'm answering her with this. Might have been overwhelmed by the loneliness in her voice. What do we do? What if by chance Kurumi is in there? Huh? Our unexpected reply is left me dumbfounded. While I'm at a loss for words, Yuka starts descending the staircase herself as if she's trying to brush me aside. Dumbstruck, I watch Yuka ascend the staircase for a short while. But before long, what the hell am I doing? I return to my senses. Must be out of my mind to let a girl go alone in the dead of night. Furthermore, according to the rumors, this shrine might be a dangerous place. Despite that, I just stood here spacing out like an idiot. I'm a pathetic excuse for a man. Frantically start chasing after Yuka. When I run up the long staircase, I see a shrine lying there, just as the rumor said. And its windows are spooky green. <laughs> It's funny how, you know, if you putting that in the color, you know, makes it look spooky. Every part of the shrine from the outer walls, pillars, and even the large roof has rotted away extensively, probably due to many years of being subjected to the sea breeze. It wouldn't be strange for it to collapse this very second. Nevertheless, despite its decrepit appearance, the building being bathed with moonlight still gives off the impression of being surrounded by an imposing air. It's an intimidating atmosphere that feels like it could scare off anyone who tried to trespass on this ground. Yuka is standing firmly still in front of the shrine. Yuka. When I call out to her, Yuka quickly turns around. I rush over to her. I don't answer her. Now to bear the look in her eyes, I instead focus on the shrine. For some reason, the, the, the door has been completely left open. Despite the fact the door is open, you can rigidly stand still. Hmm. Well, it don't seem like they decided to come back, so I mean, why why not leave the door open? She's probably gotten cold feet and is hesitant to go inside. Karumi! I try shouting, but there's no response. I hear the lonely hooting of an owl. I finally resolve myself and step inside. I quietly sneak a single step inside and firmly stare in the darkness. You could follow us trying to hide behind my back. In the next instant. Kurumi hmm. Kurumi is over there. It's almost anticlimactic to find her so easily. Right now, Kurumi is kneeling flat on the center of the floor. Her gaze blankly drifts in space, so blankly that it looks like she's dreaming. Yuka runs to Kurumi's side and uneasily checks how she's doing. I sign relief. Huh. Anyway, what's most important is that she's alright. Since I'm relieved for the time being, I decide to take the time to survey my, sur survey my surroundings. It's an almost perfectly square room. The walls and the ceiling are plastered with red varnish, which has almost completely weathered and peeled off. A small staircase leads to a floor slightly higher than the one I'm standing on, and on top of it is an altar modeled after a small Shindo shrine. It's so incredibly deteriorated that it feels like the, just one small light tap is all that's needed to send this whole place collapsing. Then I like how he's just standing there, taking in the sights and not saying, Everybody, let's just get out now. Grab Karumi and run. <laughs> 
probably due to the many years of enduring the ocean breeze. Well, grab Peruvian. Uh, saddle, or not saddle, but tiptoe out. Yeah, tiptoe. That's the word. Well, none of this really matters. For now, I've got to get out of this gloomy place as soon as possible. Krumi, what are you doing? Let's hurry back. I'll go towards Krumi's side. Oh, okay. I guess this would be an inappropriate, uh, inappropriate place to make a fart joke. Unlike a few episodes back, so. I guess it's the floor, yeah. The right floor creaks, sounding like it could break at any second. Just then, it breaks? Krumi, okay. Let's fix A. Krumi slowly mutters this in a very small voice. She remembers the place? Oops. You can ask this. Krumi hesitates a little. Well, anyway, let's get out of here. We can talk about it later. Still on the floor, Krumi looks up, shifting her attention to me, and gives me a small nod. Krumi grabs on the yuka and gently stands up. We then begin walking towards the exit, but at that moment... <sighs> the sound of a bell. Quite the reoccurring sound now, it seems. I heard it from behind me. I walked towards the direction that the ring came from, as if it's drawing me in. When I turn my head, I see Yuka is right behind me, following me. Krumi is leaning on the exit, standing stock still. Mm. Excuse me. And again, I hear the sound of a se uh, I hear the sound of a bell again. The moonlight shines in from the e exit, illuminating the object, but it's not the bell. It's a different bell hanging from the eaves of the building, modeled after a small Shinto shrine. It's a copy of the kind of bell with a rope attached to it that is rung at times of worship. It's a little larger than the bell in my dream. Why did the bell ring? I tried gently holding my hands out to the bell. I realized there's a faint wind blowing from somewhere. Is there a draft? I try looking around and investigating my surroundings. There's nothing particularly strange that I see. I look at the bell once more, or one more time. When I look closely, I notice a tattered piece of Japanese paper attached to its back. It's a talisman. There's something written on it in old-fashioned uh, cursive script. The spring rain at the end of the cape, together with the echoing bell, were free from time. So, if you stand out at the pier in the rain in spring and ding the bell, it'll fix your time. Is that what it's saying? Seems like that's what it's saying. Seems like it's what it's saying. Again, I've got the I've got the feeling they're in a time loop, you know, repeating the same same six days or so. So I might be wrong about that, but. Hmm. It's like a waka. But just what does it mean? A waka? It's something like a haiku? I'm by far not a poetry expert. Suddenly Yuka mutters this. Yuka, do you understand what the, what it means? さあ早く帰ろう。みんなくるみちゃんのことを心配してるんだから。you can then turn around and begin to walk towards the exit. Although I'm harboring this feeling like something's bothering me, I follow after. I won't lie, I was expecting something a little bit more dramatic than the bell dinging. I'm just saying I was expecting something a little bit more dramatic. I guess they haven't officially left the place yet, so... That could happen, which we'll have to find out next time if it does. Yeah. Cliffhanger, hanging from a cliff.
There's this. There was that thing in the. There's this PBS show called Between the Lines, and I could. I remember the theme song because I would say it, but I can't remember. But anyway, uh, <laughs> the stuff that pops to my mind. I do hope you folks enjoyed this. Let me know something. If this video looks better or worse, um, I'm going to try something a little different uh, with it. So let me know if it looks better or worse or the same. If it, tell me if it looks exactly the same, no noticeable difference on YouTube. So yeah, let me know. Uh, because if it looks the same, then that'll be that'll be actually won't hurt anything. <laughs> it'll be a little bit easier. But anyway, that's the point. Uh, do hope you folks enjoyed, and I shall see you in the next one. Where we're moving on along with this story. It's although it, I'm shocked it's already been. As many episodes as it's been, I can't remember how many episodes, so. <laughs> it's less than 20, but over 15. That's bad that that's as well as my memory is on it. This might be episode 20. Is this episode 20? I think this is actually episode 20. Now that I think about it. Could be 19, but it's 20. It might be 20. You guys are, you know, this is pointless. You guys are laughing at me right now for not knowing. But if I knew right, then you're like, well, you're laughing at me anyway. So, anyway, see you in the next one. That's the whole point of this whole thing. The whole thing? The whole end thing, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Bye.